story time with your Pascal's. Yes, it's story time. Come check it out. Story songs, poems, and more. Story time. Let your imagination soar. Myths, legends, and fables. The tortoise and the hare. The tortoise and the hare. One bright sunny day, Tortoise was sunning himself on a rock by the pond. He was enjoying the hot rays on his face when he heard a rustling in the reeds behind him. It was Hare and Fox out on a stroll. Hare bounced along confidently. Yeah, I'm just pretty sure I'm the fastest of all the animals. Fox flattened his ears. I mean, are you really sure? You haven't raced all the animals. True, but I have raced all my brothers and sisters, and I win every time. And one time, I raced a frog too, and I won that really easily, so I think I am. Fox wasn't convinced. Okay, but that's still not all animals. I feel like you probably need to run a few more races before you can call yourself the fastest ever. Fine! You pick an animal, any animal, I'll race them and I'll win. Tortoise stepped down from his sunny porch. I'll race you, Hare. I couldn't help but hear you. And I'd like to challenge you to a race. <laughs> you? Hare and Fox burst out laughing. But tortoises are so slow. Tortoise smiled a small, knowing smile. Tortoises live a very long time, you see, and this tortoise in particular was very old and wise. I will race you, and I will win. <laughs> You're on! Tortoise and Hare agreed that they'd race twice around the pond, and that Fox would pronounce the official winner. A small crowd began to gather excitedly around the starting line. A few minutes before Fox blew his whistle to signal the start of the race, Tortoise took his place to get ready. He looked straight ahead at the path before him and could hardly hear the crowd chattering around him. Tortoise knew that if he just kept his eye on the prize and focused, that he would definitely win. Hare was bouncing around and gossiping with the spectators. Yeah, I was just chit-chatting with Fox, and suddenly this old tortoise just challenged me to a race. Kind of weird, but who am I to back down from a challenge? So, here I am. Don't worry, though. I've got this in the bag. Hare was not very modest. A few moments before midday, she took her place next to Tortoise at the start line. Last chance to back out, Tortoise. Just in case you want to avoid being super embarrassed when you lose. Tortoise just kept his eyes straight ahead. I'm not backing out. Just then, Fox blew his whistle. The race was on. As soon as Hare heard the whistle, she was off like a shot. She ran and hopped and ran, and soon the roars of the crowd had faded into the distance behind her. She snuck a glance over her shoulder to see how close Tortoise was, and she could hardly see him at all. She was already almost halfway around the pond, and Tortoise was just a speck by the starting line. Hare laughed. <laughs> I knew it! I'm the fastest animal in the world! And she kept running and hopping and running, closer and closer to her certain victory. Meanwhile, back at the starting line, Tortoise was not making quite as much headway. He plodded steadily along, but at a much slower pace than Hare. Some of the spectators were still cheering for him, but more had stopped and turned to one another with quizzical looks, wondering aloud why this tortoise had thought he could ever have beaten the speedy hare in a foot race. Bullfrog shook his head. He'll never win. He's delusional. Raccoon agreed. Poor tortoise. He's going to be so embarrassed when he loses. But tortoise could barely hear any of this. His eyes were still staring straight ahead as he concentrated on making his way to the finish line. Admittedly, it didn't really look like he'd actually win. Tortoise could barely see Hare in the distance. But Tortoise was confident. 
He just kept singing to himself and making his way towards the finish line, sure that he would come out on top. Hair felt amazing as she began her second lap. She passed through the crowd of animals waiting around the starting line, and they roared with enthusiasm. Hair beamed with excitement. She knew everyone thought she was going to win, including herself. <laughs> I knew it! I'm the fastest animal ever! <laughs> At this point, she was slightly out of breath. In fact, she was getting a little tired. <laughs> I need to rest, but I can't slow down now. Just then, as she rounded the curve of the pond for the second time, she saw Tortoise. He was walking slowly and steadily. She smiled to herself, even though she was exhausted and all her muscles hurt. She was winning. <laughs> Passing on your left. <laughs> her lungs burned as she laughed. She looked over her shoulder hoping to see a look of defeat on Tortoise's face, but she was disappointed to see him still walking along, looking straight ahead and mumbling to himself. Hair tore ahead. <sighs> I'm the greatest! I'm the greatest! <laughs> but soon her chant changed. <sighs> I'm so tired! I'm so tired! <sighs> Hair slowed to a stop, bent over, and put her paws on her knees. Whew. You know what? I'm going to win this no matter what. It's okay if I take a break. I deserve this. Whew. I'm the fastest animal in the world. <laughs> she noticed a very cosy looking patch of wildflowers on the side of the path. I'll just lay down and rest for a second. She snuggled into the soft flower patch, and soon she fell asleep. Tortoise had not slowed or tired in all his journey around the pond. He passed through the starting line as he began his second lap around. But the audience wasn't really paying attention. It was just as well. Tortoise wasn't really paying attention to them either. Tortoise walked and plodded and sang. He was almost finished with his second lap. He was getting a little tired, but he didn't slow his speed at all. The tortoise knew he'd be done soon. Though tortoise kept his eyes straight ahead, concentrating on the task at hand, he caught a glimpse of a fluffy cottontail to the side. He tilted his head and saw hair curled up in a patch of wildflowers snoring. Tortoise smiled then turned his eyes back to the path and kept on his course, singing all the while. The animals at the finish line were confused as they watched the sun sink in the sky. They thought the race would have been over by now. Where are they? I thought Hare would be back by now. Yeah, where's Hare? She started her second lap ages ago. I think I see someone. It's... I can't believe this. Tortoise was approaching the finish line, still walking at the pace he'd started with. A hush fell over the crowd as everyone looked at Tortoise with shocked expressions. The crowd gasped as Tortoise got closer and closer. Then they started to cheer. Go, Tortoise, go! Go, Tortoise, go! The excited commotion woke hair. She looked around groggily and snapped to attention when she saw Tortoise nearing the finish line. Oh my gosh! I must have overslept! Care took off like a thunderbolt. She raced around the pond in no time and came around the final turn. Look! It's hair! It's going to be close! It sure was. Tortoise was only a few feet from the finish line, but hair came tearing down the track. She was 30 feet away and gaining fast. 20, 10, 5. At the last second, she dove and slid headfirst for the finish line and came to a stop a few inches short. Tortoise smiled as he slowly stepped across the finish line. The crowd of spectators began cheering wildly and roared with enthusiasm. I declare, Tortoise... 
the winner. Oh, no! Tortoise smiled to himself. He was proud, but not surprised. He'd known all along that if he just focused on his goal and worked towards it, that he would win. Hare's ego was bruised, but she had learnt a lesson. Never again will I underestimate my opponent, and never again will I nap during a race. Oh. The end. Sleepy time. Hush, little baby. Ten. This will open. 
rewrite your previous recording. To continue, press me, the green puppy. You have 10 minutes. When you are finished, press me again. Ready? Three, two, one. Hello and welcome to my show. to listen to the recorded story. Hello and welcome to my show. Night light. Projector and night light. Buttons to choose how many stories or songs to play before your device goes to sleep. Hello? Timer off! Use the arrow buttons to choose how many stories or songs to play before your device goes to sleep. When you are ready, choose your story category to start your audio. Classics. Starting your stories now. The Tale of Peter Rabbit. Once upon a time, there were four little rabbits. And their names were Flopsy, Mopsy, Cottontail and Peter. They lived with their mother in a sandbank underneath the root of a very big fir tree. Now, my dears, said old Mrs. Rabbit one morning, you may go into the field or down the lane, but don't go into Mr. McGregor's garden. Your father had an accident there. He was put in a pie by Mrs. McGregor. Now, run along and don't get into mischief. I am going out. Then old Mrs. Rabbit took a basket and her umbrella and went through the wood to the baker's. She bought a loaf of brown bread and five currant buns. Flopsy, Mopsy and Cottontail, who were good little bunnies, went down the lane to gather blackberries. But Peter, who was very naughty, ran straight away to Mr. McGregor's garden and squeezed under the gate. First, he ate some lettuce and some green beans. And then he ate some radishes. And then, feeling rather sick, he went to look for some parsley. But just as he got to the end of a row of cucumbers, whom should he meet but Mr. McGregor? Mr. McGregor was on his hands and knees planting cabbages. But he jumped up and ran after Peter, waving a rake and calling out, Stop! Thief! Peter was dreadfully frightened. He rushed all over the garden, but he had forgotten the way back to the gate. He lost one of his shoes among the cabbages and the other shoe among the potatoes. After losing them, he ran on all four legs. He was running so fast that he might have gotten away altogether if he had not run into the net that covered the gooseberry bush. He was caught by the large buttons on his jacket. It was a blue jacket with brass buttons, quite new. Peter gave himself up for lost and shed big tears. Some friendly sparrows overheard his sobs and flew to him in great excitement. You must get out of there! Twittered the sparrows. Mr. McGregor is coming! Mr. McGregor came up with a bucket under which he intended to trap Peter. But Peter wriggled out just in time, leaving his jacket in the net behind him. Peter dropped to the ground and rushed into the tool shed, leapt into a watering can and ducked down. It would have been a beautiful thing to hide in, if it had not had so much water in it. Mr. McGregor was quite sure that Peter was somewhere in the tool shed, perhaps hidden underneath a flower pot. He began to turn them over carefully, looking under each one. Where are you? Peter ducked down further and got water up his nose. He sneezed. Aha! 
Mr. McGregor was after him in no time and tried to stomp on Peter, who jumped out of a window, upsetting three plants. The window was too small for Mr. McGregor, and he was tired of running after Peter, so he finally gave up and returned to his work. <sighs> Peter sat down to rest. <sighs> he was out of breath and trembling with fright, and he had no idea which way to go. Also, he was very damp from sitting in the watering can full of water. After a time, he began to wander about, going lippity-lippity, not very fast, and looking all around. He found a door in a wall, but it was locked, and there was no room for a fat little rabbit to squeeze underneath. An old mouse was running in and out over the stone doorstep, carrying peas and beans to her family in the wood. Peter asked her the way to the gate, but she had such a large pea in her mouth that she could not answer. She only shook her head at him, and Peter began to cry. Then he tried to find his way straight across the garden, but he became more and more puzzled. Presently, he came to a pond where Mr. McGregor filled his watering cans. A white cat was staring at some goldfish. She sat very, very still, but now and then the tip of her tail twitched as if it were alive. Peter thought it best to go away without speaking to her. He had heard about cats from his cousin, little Benjamin Bunny. He went back toward the tool shed, but suddenly, quite close to him, he heard the noise of a garden hoe. Scritch, scratch, scritch, scratch. Peter scurried underneath the bushes, but since nothing happened, he came out, climbed up into a wheelbarrow, and peeped over the side. The first thing he saw was Mr. McGregor hoeing onions. His back was turned towards Peter, and beyond him was the gate. Peter got down very quietly off the wheelbarrow and started running as fast as he could go along a straight path behind some black currant bushes. Mr. McGregor caught sight of him at the corner, but Peter did not care. He slipped underneath the gate and was safe at last in the wood outside the garden. Mr. McGregor grumbled and hung up Peter's little jacket in the shoes to make a little scarecrow to frighten the blackbirds. Peter never stopped running and did not look behind him until he got home to the big fir tree. He was so tired that he flopped down upon the nice soft sand on the floor of the rabbit hole and shut his eyes. His mother was busy cooking and she wondered what he had done with his clothes. It was the second little jacket and pair of shoes that Peter had lost in a week. Unfortunately, Peter did not feel very well during the evening. I'm not feeling well, Mother. His mother put him to bed, made some chamomile tea, and gave a dose of it to Peter. One tablespoonful to be taken at bedtime. But Flopsy, Mopsy, and Cottontail felt marvellous and had bread and milk and blackberries for supper. The end. Nighty-night!